My name is Jim Beresford. I'm the Global Head of Engagement and Partnerships for Resumo. Resumo is your talent attraction hub, letting you attract, engage and manage, sitting at the heart of your recruitment solution. My role with Resumo is to engage with talent attraction and HR professionals like yourselves. I also build a wealth of partnerships around our core technology with other technology providers. Our talk this afternoon is Engagement is a Two-Way Street, where we'll talk a little bit about the technology, talk about human involvement, and we're going to end with accessibility for all, looking at neurodiversity. Our aim is to give you an understanding of why we feel this is, and the objective to provide a well-rounded hiring process of choice. So for me, engagement starts at that very first point of attraction all the way through to onboarding, with retention, reward, and recognition, and to that point of when the situation, or they, or you decide, that person's leaving with offboarding, an area perhaps we don't look at. Now, for this topic, I am talk, I'm gonna be talking more about the attraction and onboarding stage. So for me, why do I feel engagement is a two-way street? And having been in recruitment for over 20 years, and running my own recruitment agency, and sat as in-house head of talent. I think that sometimes we're not fully embracing, fully utilising, or even fully understanding all the technology we have. And perhaps we don't have the time to really think about those candidates that we're trying to attract on that other side of the street and give them the same choice. So technology. Now, I think it's fair to say that we all live on the internet in some kind of social media community, some social channel that's in our hand or on the screen. And our challenge as talent attraction professionals is to drive out that outbound engagement across these wide range of social channels where we're promoting our employee brand, we're showcasing the company and ourselves to attract those individual candidates. Now we're delivering this outbound communication to a wealth of communities and channels. And we all have our own preferences. Um, LinkedIn, which has been mine for now <coughs> over 10 years. Facebook, Twitter, Google+. We have perhaps less known geographically centric like Zing, Zing and Weibo. We have industry specific like Meetup and GitHub. And there are hundreds of types of channels we could use. And for this talk, the team and I looked and researched more channels. And we thought, could we find some channels that would sort of compete against those where we live, the likes of LinkedIn? And what we found that most of them were personal channels, personal communities, rather than professional channels and professional communities. And I think there's the line, communities and channels. We found interesting, and I think Alistair just mentioned about WhatsApp, 55.6% of the world's population use WhatsApp, and they've recently introduced a business app as well. What we also started to understand was the lines are blurred. Blurred between these professional channels, personal channels, professional communities, personal communities. And we're even now looking at going into online games forums um, to, and hobbies to attract talent. We're branding game servers where we're marketing our brand. And for years, we've always said, recruitment is more marketing and advertising. I think now it's becoming more PR and social engagement. So what technology enables us to deliver that message? Well, central to everything, we have a range of platforms. Those platforms, some harness the technology, some power, some drive, some control, and some combine, like ourselves, the whole technology. But you can plug in technology around that. You can plug in technology, you can use it independently. And we have technology in this room that lets you understand in more granular detail the information we're trying to drive out, like candidate ID, and Steve was talking about earlier on. We have technology now where we can scrape from all these social channels, where we can find and engage with these candidates, like Talent Wunder and Amazing Hiring. And of course, we have chatbots. 
and Ben, who's coming on a little later on, I know he's going to be talking about chatbots. And we can auto-engage 24-7. Excuse me, I talk too much. So we can also enable video meetings, interviews. We can also automatically now send out our own chosen content with an app called Content App. And most of us are aware, and we use these in some form or other. And we all know the power of videos. And according to some assessments, videos will make up 80% of the internet traffic in the next few years. We have voice activation, the likes of Alexa. We have voice technology that we can send text to in the likes of Slack. And LinkedIn now let us send both inbound and outbound voicemail messages. So thinking about the technology we have, I thought, what else? What are other people doing? What other professions doing to attract their customers? And as we start to see our candidates as customers and consumers of our brands, so I started to look at an area that interested me with augmented reality, AR, virtual reality, VR, and mixed reality, MR, which is a combination of both VR and AR. And initially I thought, oh, I found something no one's going to be using. First of all, I found the spec savers. And I don't want anyone seeing the spec savers of what you can do. You can go into a shop, it digitally analyzes your face, and you can see different glasses, you can scroll up the screen. And it's the virtual try on before you buy technology. Now, the team found that the British Army have used VR technology. They let their potential recruits give the experience of driving a tank, flying a plane. And they receive 66% more applications by doing this with VR headsets. But what if we push this technology further? Direct to your smartphones, into your own home, and with recruitment, right to active and passive candidates. Direct engagement. MR technology that lets them see themselves driving a train, flying a plane, a truck, a digger, a bus. They could wear a uniform exciting outbound engagement that we're driving directly to our candidates. And pushing it even further still, what if they could record that, tell their story, give them give an understanding of why this position is right for them, build a digital profile that they could then tap, click, and send directly to you or the hiring manager. From the other side of the street, really exciting inbound engagement. Now, we can do some of this already. And with the rapid growth of technology, it wouldn't surprise me that this isn't already on a roadmap or been developed somewhere. And I think that's one of our challenges, keeping up with all this technology that we have. And we've got a lot of things to consider. And we've talked about in the room already about bias and where we fit assessments in. But choice. Choice is one of the big things. And I think if we consider... Why in the main do we not offer the choice of anything other than a one-dimensional CV, a flat application form? Those humans, individuals we're trying to connect with, we're offering limited choice from the other side of the street. So human interaction. Now, when the team and I got together and we started to discuss about bringing information into this topic, this part of the topic, we thought we could bring stats in. But it's really subjective. So I'm only going to go by really what I feel here with technology and human interaction. And I think human and emotional intelligence will play a big, big key to the technology we use. We already see EQ as a requirement in job adverts. And this could be setting us up already to prepare for this. And I've always said that recruitment is not complicated. Technology can be complex, but neither is as complex or as complicated as us human beings, as individuals, or as I am. So what do we do? Do we consider, when we map out the use and adopt technology, to make our lives easier as talent attraction professionals? Or do we consider the candidates' lives? And what and where should interaction and intervention be? And which should override each other? There's a question mark because I can't answer that because it's all subjective and it's going to be down to each individual firm, the type of people they're looking for. But 
What I can say is when technology works well, it works really well. When it fails and struggles to keep up with us as complex individuals, this is where the frustration comes in. And I want a choice. I want a choice for the experience. Why? Well, nearly four in five candidates, 78%, say they rated candidate experience as how a company values its people. And let's just take automated calls. And I'm sure many of you have been on those automated calls where you press one and then ask you to say something. And we have to repeat it. And by the 15th time we've got to that point, the point of failure, the experience has failed. So I want the choice. I want the choice for human interaction along this journey. But we also have to consider volume. And what comes better, automation or the human being? The speed of response. Because candidates rated that the speed of response is something they build trust with from an employer to employee. So where do we begin? Well, I started talking to people about what I thought. And I was initially going to say, treat people like you like to be treated. Something I was always growing up with. But it's not about me. And technology that we use and human involvement is about all our candidates. And I think that's as simple as that. We've got to consider all the candidates we're trying to attract on this journey. So I want to end my talk where I think we should start to talk more and talk about neurodiversity. We talked a little bit about all the technology choice we have, the preferences that we have, the human choice, the preference for others. And some of you might have seen or heard talks by Sarah Harvey, Lucy Hobbs, or Theo Smith on neurodiversity. And this really challenged me. It inspired me. But I also started to question myself as a talent attraction and professional recruiter. For those of you who are not aware, the term neurodiversity refers to the infinite range of differences in individual brain function and behavioural traits. Now, this is on the CIPD website. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm still learning this topic. And everyone's talking about this should be recognised and respected. Thomas Armstrong wrote The Power of Neurodiversity. We need to admit that there is no standard brain. On the CIPD website, it also notes this. To be neurodiversity smart, firms should start to strive to develop a language of acceptance, of neurodifference, and celebrate and leverage neurodiverse strengths while taking steps to accommodate and not belittle any specific challenges that that individual might face. And that really got me thinking. And it challenged my background. I've over 20 years worth of recruitment. And I have written job adverts to attract people. That's, that's really our jobs. That's what we do day in, day out to attract people. But I have mentioned in my job advert selection process that we'll be having great communication skills. We we're looking for team players. We're going to be holding an assessment centre in a bright, open plan office. For neurodivergent people, the selection process is a big issue. Traditional methods can put a huge strain. And by what I've done, by mentioning team players, assessment centre, bright, open plan office, I've discouraged some talent I was looking to attract. Neurodivergence UK reported that 88% of neurotypical people felt discouraged from applying to a job at all. That's 88% from discouraged from applying to a job at all. And those that did apply, 52% felt discriminated against within the selection process. So by what I have said in the job adverts, by what we say, by what I haven't said, but why what we don't say in our adverts and our videos, our methods of engagement, limiting inbound engagement, we could all be missing out and attracting some really talented people. Now, there are firms like My Access Hub, National Autistic Society, that help organisations become more accessible and inclusive to neurodivergent people by offering virtual reality and e-learning. And there is so much more to think about and talk about than within the time I've got here. 
But I'm going to end in a minute with a video made by the National Autistic Society that actually highlights some of that 52% we were talking about. But to close and not to finish, I think we need to consider all the technology choice that we have. We need to consider human feelings, what we say and what we don't say, providing perhaps more choice to equally engage for those on the other side of the street, to make a more rounded hiring process of choice, making engagement a two-way street. Is it Stephen? Please, follow me. Congrats on all the awards. So, tell me about yourself. So, what would you say your strengths and weaknesses are? Really? You don't look it. Just so you know, the role has changed ever so slightly, but it's nothing major. Let's find out a bit about you. So, what experience do you have? What skills, what abilities? Anything? It doesn't seem like you've had a job for a few months. Six months? A year? Why is that? Okay. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in. We'll be in touch. Are you okay? I'm not unemployable, I'm autistic, and sometimes I get too much information.